What's up everybody? We're back and uh, well, it's kind of chilly. I didn't expect it to be chilly and rainy today, but here we are. Nonetheless, I got a lot of stuff at Georgia Bushcraft and yes, a lot of it is bushcrafty, overlandy, outdoors, but there is a lot more overlap than you might expect between what I saw at Georgia Bushcraft and the EDC world. So uh, I'd like to show you guys what I got at the event and I think you guys will like it. Some of the stuff is definitely, you know, more for the truck, but that's fine. I'm gonna do a truck EDC update very, very soon, like literally at the end of this month. But there's a lot of overlap. There's some EDC stuff there that I think most of you probably wouldn't expect. And I do believe that's why I'm there. That's why I go to these events because it changes my perspective. That's what I explained in the video that I did after the last time I went to Georgia Bushcraft. So with that said, this is everything I got at Georgia Bushcraft Fall Gathering 2022. And with that said, let's do it in here. It's been a long time since I've said that, hasn't it? <laughs> let's do it. So I'd like to start with this bag because it's here and ready to go, but also I think it's gonna start raining. There's like 95% chance of rain. So let's take the bag off and we can hit that inside if it does rain. Let's talk about some of the bigger truck stuff first. So the first thing I wanna show you is something I was not at all expecting to buy. This is a Primus stove. It's called the Alika, I believe. It's a two burner, it has two different size burners. The reason I ended up buying this is because I showed up to Georgia Bushcraft totally unprepared. I showed you guys like how I loaded out the excursion before I went. I didn't really bring anything to cook with other than a backpacking stove and I didn't bring any food. I brought the refrigerator, but I just didn't know what to expect. I thought there were gonna be more food vendors or, you know, I, I just wasn't sure and I erred on the wrong side. So I didn't bring stuff with me and fortunately Blue Ridge Overland Gear was there and Rick Stowe was like, I got a stove if you're looking for one. He actually offered to let me borrow his Alika and I was like, I don't know, I kind of need one. I want to build a drawer system for this refrigerator and then have a stove underneath it. So I wanted to go ahead and get a nice stove. And this thing is actually really sweet. Let's, let's go around the back real quick so I can show you. I still left all the camping stuff in here because I was also camping this past weekend. And uh, man, I'm just gonna leave it in here until I don't need it anymore. Completely unrelated before we get to the stove. This thing, I got this in my PO box, a MIFA. I don't know what it's called, like some wild wild camping MIFA lantern Bluetooth speaker. This thing is awesome. Just totally awesome. I used this the entire time I was at Georgia Bushcraft. And people were like, what the heck? This thing sounds awesome. So it's a Bluetooth speaker and a lantern. It lasted for four days, like nighttime, playing music, lantern for four days straight. This thing is sick. Uh, I don't know much about it, but gets my vote of approval. Okay, back to the stove. So this thing is actually really cool. You got two locks on the side here, flip those up and it opens up. Pretty standard stuff, right? Looks like your typical Coleman or whatever. This is a a prop to hold your little uh, re replaceable or disposable propane tank if you want to use it with that. It also comes with, on the other side, you've got this little uh, regulator here for one of those camp stoves. It came with hardware to also convert it to use isobutane. So I do a lot of backpacking. I have a lot of isobutane. I can use that with this too. That's one of the reasons I went ahead and grabbed it. So you have large burner, small burner, windshields that clip in. And this is the other thing I really liked about it. You've got these gold pins and the whole lid comes off. So you have the ability to cook with a larger pot here. And then this is a pot stand. You can put hot stuff on this. That's what that the wood's for. I just think this thing is really, really neat. It was not cheap. I think it was $280. Very expensive for a camp stove, but uh, it feels so, so good. And I like having some of these additional features like the removable lid because it doesn't limit you to only working with standard like really small camp stoves you can put a big cast iron on this and and really kind of expand its use so because of that i went ahead and bought this thing even though i wasn't planning on it and uh it's gonna live in the truck and since we're right here let's talk about this thing good lord <laughs> it's so heavy Ugh. this is a fire pit a flat pack fire pit and it came with this uh 
wrap, I guess, from Blue Ridge Overland Gear. So I bought a solo stove for camping in the truck with the family and stuff. And it's just too big and bulky. I mean, it's this big and there's nothing, there's like no way around that. It's always gonna take up this amount of space. This, on the other hand, packs flat. You nest these plates inside the V-cuts here and you have a V-shaped fire pit with a cooking grate that goes on top. And the reason I really like it, obviously it packs flat, doesn't take up a whole lot of space, works really, really well. The metal radiates the heat really, really well as well. But when you take the whole fire pit out of this tool roll or whatever you want to call it, the pouch, the case, you can use this case to gather firewood. So you can load this up with firewood and carry it around. That's just double duty. I like things that, that pull double duty. This is just one of those. And these were on special for the show. Uh, maybe it was because I was a vendor. I don't know. But this was $200 for the whole kit. I believe the original price for the stove and the pack is like $280. So it was a good deal at the show. It's very expensive for a fire pit. But uh, I really liked what I saw. We got to use them before I ended up ponying up the money for it. And I am not upset that I did. Good lord, it's so heavy. <laughs> Okay, the other stuff is around there. These were the first purchases I made, or it was a single purchase technically, uh, when I first got to the show. Greg from Smoky Mountain Knife Works, he was like, hey, if you want some axes from Holtz Brook, you might want to come grab them. They're 50% off and there's only one left in the large one and uh, a couple left in the hatchet. So I didn't even think about it. I went and bought them immediately because I was wanting a Holtz Brook and these are the Agdor, so that's indicated by the blue paint. But this is the Yankee 26 felling axe. Um, pulled the stickers off. I'm going to actually customize these. So Shane from Essie uh, stripped the paint off and did some linseed oil and burned the handles, and it looks amazing now. I'm going to do that to both of these. So I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the blue, but you can get away, you can get rid of that really, really easily. So I got the 26 inch felling axe and then the 15 inch hatchet, I believe. So this would be more of like a little camp axe backpacking. The felling axe is something if I'm camping in the truck, I'm taking that one. These were probably the coolest, best value pickup that I had. But really, I think this is my favorite thing that I got and we can go inside, it's starting to rain. Rick Stowe is an awesome dude, and he hooked me up with the Blue Ridge Overland Gear tool roll. So well, let's go inside and talk about this thing so we don't get caught in the rain. As I mentioned, uh, my buddy at Blue Ridge Overland Gear hooked me up with this. Uh, we've been talking about this tool pouch roll for a while uh, because I've been using the Step 22 Gear Pangolin tool roll in my truck, and I, I liked it. I think mostly because it was multicam black, if I'm gonna be honest. And it was nice, like it's made very, very well, but it's just not as functional as this, this tool pouch. Uh, this thing just rolls up much easier. So here's actually a piece from that pangolin. Um, I've got pliers and wrenches and stuff in there, some uh, wire snips. I have a whole socket kit in here. It is really poorly organized. I literally just dumped it in here from the pangolin, but I've, I've got to organize this a little better. It's kind of a pain when trying to work on stuff and searching for sockets. I just throw a breaker bar down here at the bottom. Uh, this is all my wrenches. So it's just a wrench roll. I have all sorts of wrenches in there. Whole wrench kit, um, probably a little bit overkill and I'm gonna start paring down because this gets the job done for a lot of these. So a little adjustable wrench, screwdrivers, there's a tire pressure gauge. And then here, this is zip ties because I need these probably more than anything else. But this tool pouch roll is really, really sick. So these come off, they're held in place with Velcro. It gets really heavy really quick though. That's really the only thing about these. The reason I like this so much more than the pangolin though is rolling it up. The pangolin, you roll it up and then stuff it down into itself and cinch it closed. And it's just a pain. This, you literally just roll it up and if these aren't long enough, you clip them and cinch. Clip and cinch. And 
that makes this thing a hundred times better and easier to use. You can kind of roll it up a little more after the fact and cinch it down a little more. And it just, it packs away so much better in my experience. I've really liked having this over the Pangolin. So thanks Blue Ridge Overland Gear and Rick for, for tossing this my way. It's gonna get a lot of use. <laughs> I need to make it a little bit lighter. Um, and then let's talk about all the small stuff. So all of that is truck related things. This is all more EDC-ish. So first things first, I bought two knives while I was at the show. These are still, I guess, a little more bushcrafty, but they were very, very cool. There were a lot of really cool knives there. These two jumped out at me more than any others. So first up, this was the first purchase that I made knife-wise. This is the Donnie Roberts MD1GH. What all of that means, if you can even see that, that is a lasering of a mad dog. MD stands for mad dog. One, no, it's a two, MD2. I originally bought the MD1, went back to Donnie, and I was like, I kind of wish I got the bigger one. So I swapped it out for a bigger one. Um, but the GH stands for goat and hammer. Those are the guys who finished this. Man, it's a freaking tank. It's an 80 CR V2. It is extremely hard. Donnie said these are hardened to 65, uh, which is very, very hard. And it just it melts in the hand. It feels so good. It's a big knife. And getting home, I kind of wished that I had gone with the, the one, the smaller one. I mean, it was like this long. This one's much, much larger. But this thing is sick. I don't have many big fixed blades and I just wanted something a little bit absurd. So that is the Mad Dog 2 from Goat and Hammer or Donnie Roberts and Goat and Hammer. So just a really cool knife. And then it has a fire steel in the sheath or a ferro rod rather. And then this, this is from Warlander Enterprises and this is just a beautiful knife. Um, I cannot remember her name. Amy? Maybe, I can't remember, but this is her Fletcher model and it just looks beautiful. Some of these, the way that this micarta patinas looks awesome. Uh, the, just the finishing, the size, the shape, everything about this was just really neat. And the reason I picked it up is that she said that she would make me a pocket sheath. So I could actually EDC this one with relative ease. This is 1085 steel, so it will rust. It rusted on me on day one. So. You guys know how I am with tool steels. I have to really fight to not get them to rust really, really, really bad. But I just thought this thing was beautiful. Just a work of art, but also very, very functional art. And I didn't mind it on the hip, but the reason I'd prefer to have it as a, a pocket fixed blade is the end of the handle here is just a little bit sharp. I would, I would personally round that just a little more because this was digging into my side. But those are the two knives I got. And then everything else in this bag I believe was given to me or I traded for. So first up, let's talk about this piece of vintage gear here, the Leatherman Juice S2. These are kind of hard to find, very hard to find. In fact, um, the Juice series is discontinued and it is a great size. I don't have a Leatherman Free here to compare the size with, but I do have my SOG Power Pint. So this is, back when Leatherman made stuff that was about the size of the power pint. They don't really make anything this size anymore. So that's why these are so highly sought after. So it's a solid set of tools. This is probably not the juice that I would choose, but I saw it and I, I traded Andy Dickinson for it. Um, this and a jacket for a TPT slide. So got a Juice S2 to bring home. He also gave me this alpaca bag, but I don't know anything about it. I tried to look it up and there is no version of this bag that I can find online. Um, not even older versions. I don't know what the deal is with this bag. There's not a black one with the orange interior. It was maybe a special edition. I'm not sure, I don't know. It's got a little USB port here on the side, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know what version of the alpaca this is. So we got the alpaca bag there as well. And then the last few things are in that front pocket. This is just a cheap pocket billows, but they were $4. Like everybody was snatching these things up. So if you were trying to stoke a fire, typically if it's dying, you wanna give it some oxygen, you just get down close to it and breathe slow, right? Well this, you can sit back in your seat and just work so well, so simple. Um, Mike from 
VanQuest purchased this for me because it was cash only and I didn't have cash. So thank you, Mike. Um, I owe you a beer next time I see you, but uh, Pocketbillos, these things work so, so well. And then the rest of the stuff I believe is from Grim Workshop, which they were our neighbors for camping after the show was over and they're just such awesome people. So Grim currently has a Kickstarter for this right here. This is the uh, lock pick and escape kit. Number one, it's currently on Kickstarter. So if you want this, you have to back it and it will come later. Um, the first tool that's in here is actually not part of the lock pick kit, but this thing has all sorts of stuff. I don't know the first thing about lock picking. Um, but this comes with everything you need to be able to lock pick almost anything. And I am going to make a video in the near future, probably this month of me using this kit and trying to learn to lock pick. So I have all the tools I need. I just have to find the skills or learn the skills to be able to open locks with this kit. These stow away in a wallet if you want. A little fork, this would have come in handy the first day I was there. So thank you, Jordan, for giving it to me on day three. But uh, <laughs> thank you regardless. No, Jordan and his dad, Charles, were really awesome people, like amazing people. I'm so glad I got to meet them. And then they threw me this prototype as well. This is their Firestarter kit V2. It is not currently out, but you have a little chisel ground knife. It's down there now. Um, it's not super sharp. I would probably put a better edge on this, but I don't know that it need, like necessarily needs to be super sharp. But you've got a knife, you have a magnesium rod, you have a scraper and a ferro rod all in this card. I've not even taken this stuff out. And these are reusable. That's something that I'd learned about these while there. I thought that they were kind of a one-time use thing. I was wrong. We learned our lesson from the, the fire ant. You wanna pull this against. I can start a fire with that really, really easily. I do believe this is it, but I can't say for sure. I feel like I keep forgetting things, but this is the bandit from Grim Workshop. It's just a little, uh, you can put the cards inside it. Let's do this with the lock pick set. So if you were gonna store all these cards together, say in like a bag or something, you could put them in one of these little holders and then you can put other stuff like a small flashlight or your pen or like literally any little trinket or other tools. They have smaller tools that aren't full card size. They have dog tags and other little itty bitty multi tools. You could carry like a whole kit of these things in one of those little bandit pouches. So uh, this is one of the things that they included for anybody that was in the campfire co-op. So it was on a little goodie bag. So I, I would encourage you if you think this is cool at all, go check them out. They've got cards for everything and they're just awesome dudes. All these people, the reason I purchased some of this stuff is these people are just killer people. I love what they're doing and I'm happy to support them. The whole community, the bushcraft community is awesome and there's just really cool stuff. I was surprised to find there was a booth from Andy with all sorts of EDC gear for sale and all sorts of stuff. I, I'm just, I think if you've ever considered going to something like Georgia Bushcraft, you should go. It's a community that's welcoming, but you're gonna find stuff there that you're not gonna find other places and stuff that will probably surprise you as well. I didn't expect to come away with a fire pit or a camp stove or <laughs> any of this stuff really. I did not go there planning to purchase anything. And I came home with a lot of new stuff and a lot of excitement about what's to come. That's it for now. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did hit that like button, subscribe. And if you wanna support what I'm doing, you can go to patreon.com forward slash bestmedc. But that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, carry on.